revolutionary greetings comrades we continue with our discussion on why zimbabweans must return back to zimbabwe to fix zimbabwe it is the task of zimbabweans ourselves to resolve the political and the economic crisis in zimbabwe as we argue for this to happen as the zimbabwe communist party we take note of what former president Tawombek said when when uh, he was saying that uh, xenophobic happened partly because there were people <clears throat> that were mobilizing society in South Africa to violently force Zimbabweans to return home to go and vote out as an appear from power. One would imagine that the concern with the president Mbege and the others was that ZANU-PF was to be removed and replaced by stooges of imperialist forces. We argue as communists that indeed we as Zimbabweans must resolve our internal issues, must resolve the political and the economic crisis in Zimbabwe. And this can only happen if ZANU PF is out of power. In our case, ZANU PF is not to be replaced by agents of imperialist forces. ZANU PF must be replaced by the dictatorship of the proletariat. In other words, ZANU PF must be replaced by the party of the working class and the workers themselves that must assume political power in Zimbabwe. There is no way that we can reform ZANU-PF. Others have been arguing since we started this series that uh, 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 some are saying, why not join ZANU-PF and try to reform it? ZANU-PF was created as agents of imperialist forces in 1963. Many hoped that uh, when the Unit Accord was signed in 1987, ZANU-PF was going to reform. It did not. Post-1994, when the liberation or majority rule was complete in the Sadak region, many thought that ZANU-PF was going to reform. It did not happen. When the bond coup happened in 2017, many celebrated and they thought that the reforms inside ZANU-PF were going to happen. It did not happen. And the others, of course, thought that uh, with the signing of the Global Political Agreement on the uh, 15th of September 2008, which uh, gave rise or which saw the formation of an inclusive government by parties represented in parliament, ZANPF did not reform. So to argue that uh, people should join en masse ZANPF and the reform it, it's not working. It is not going to work. So the solution is that uh, ZANU-PF must be removed from power if we are to rebuild the economy, if we are to uh, uh, resolve the political crisis in Zimbabwe. This is why it is critical that we as Zimbabweans inside Zimbabwe and the outside in the diaspora must organize ourselves as a political force under the leadership of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. We have explained in the previous video that the entire population cannot be expected uh, to be cadres. That is to say, to start Marxism. We are creating communist uh, friends or communist supporters. We know that there are those that are not happy in the manner in which our country is run, but for one reason or another do not share or believe in the ideology of scientific socialism, which is our guiding ideology. But they agree with all of us that we must resolve the economic and political crisis in Zimbabwe. So as communists, 
we argue the migrant workers, we argue workers in Zimbabwe to be organized in trade unions, to be organized in residence associations, to be organized as supporters of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. The Communist Manifesto says, and I quote, the communists are distinguished from the other working class parties by this only one. In the national struggles of the proletarians of the different countries, they point out and bring to the front the common interests of the entire proletariat independent of national lead. In the context of Zimbabwe, what is our interest? What is the interest of the proletariat? In Zimbabwe, the proletariat or the working people or the working class want jobs. Young people want jobs. This is why they flock to South Africa. They cross Limbopo River. Not because they, they do not want to remain in Zimbabwe. They cross because they want jobs. Unfortunately, when these young people get into South Africa, they realize that the unemployment in South Africa is also rising, which then, because they do not have proper documents, they become easy targets for exploitation by the bourgeoisie in South Africa, leading to clashes between the migrant workers and the local South African workers. So the interests of young people in Zimbabwe, the interests of those that, should, that are economic active, they want the jobs. This is why the Zimbabwe Communist Party in its political program says, let us build a national democratic economy based on national planning. This is key. We must build a national democratic economy based on, based on national planning linked to devolution of power to the people. We are not saying to allay the fears of President Mbeki and others. We are not saying remove ZANPF so that our economy can be built under the influence of imperialist forces. No. We are saying let us build a national democratic economy based on national planning linked to devolution of power to the people. We are saying this mindful of the fact that we are not yet ready as a Zimbabwe to transit to a socialist economy. In the communist university, the question has always been asked, uh, what is socialism? Because there are different interpretations. So what we want in Zimbabwe at this stage is production. We must organize production, create jobs, have young people at the workplace. Once we have young people at the workplace, without them every day crossing to South Africa, we organize them into trade unions. We raise their class consciousness at the workplace as we transit to a socialist economy. The second point that, that, that the Communist Manifesto says, in the various stages of development, which the strike of the working class against the bourgeoisie has to pass through, they always and everywhere represent the interests of the movement as a whole. It talks about communism. What is this movement as a whole? It is the polterity movement. As the Zimbabwe Communist Party, in the case of Zimbabwe or in the context of Zimbabwe, we represent the interests of everyone in Zimbabwe, the working class, those that identify themselves as the working class. And of course others, because of maybe lack of understanding, they think that when we talk of the working class, we only talk of the people that are employed. We talk of those that are economic active, but one reason or another, they are not at, 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 uh, at the workplace. So we do not represent a section, a, a, a certain po, a, 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 a ethnic group in Zimbabwe. We do not represent the Shona. We do not a, o, 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 on their own or the Ndebele on their own. We represent the entire mass of the people of Zimbabwe. This is why as the Zimbabwe Communist Party, 
we are saying we are the majority because the working class in Zimbabwe is the majority in terms of numbers. It is the majority. So we represent the majority in Zimbabwe. As I conclude, what is the immediate, what is our immediate aim as the Zimbabwe Communist Party, which is in line with what the Communist Manifest, Manifesto says? For us to say, let us mobilize everyone into Zimbabwe Communist Party supporters. The immediate aim, I'm quoting the Communist Manifesto, the immediate aim of the Communists is the same as that of all other Polterian parties. Formation of the Polterian into a class. This is key. We want to organize the Polterian into a class. We want to raise the class consciousness of the proletariat. I continue. Overthrow of the bourgeoisie uh, supremacy. It is not about, uh, as others will say, Shona supremacy. It is about the overthrow of the bourgeois supremacy. This is our key aim as the Zimbabwe Communist Party. Conquest of political power by the proletariat. This is why it is key that we remove ZANU-PF. Removing ZANU-PF from power does not necessarily mean that we have attained state power. No. Removing ZANU-PF from power means that it is actually a first step towards attaining I mean state power. Z removing zanu pf means we'll have attained political power there's a difference between political power and the state power because if you do not control the state yes you'll have political power but you do not control the state you do not control the decisive means of production so the zimbabwe community part we are mobilizing zimbabweans sikoka ama zimbabweans wonke irrespective of ukuthi bakhuluma liphi ulimi ukuthi thina singamakomanisi sifuna kube lama supporters awe Zimbabwe Communist Party njengoba kulama supporters amaqembu ebhola eh, is ama decisions kathathwa ngama supporters athathwa yilabo abangamalunga eklab ngama supporters ay lenders ama supporters e Dynamo se Liverpool awe Arsenal awe Manchester United lihlala likhuluma ngokuthi hey team yami thenge plate sithenge players thenge player ukhuluma njenge support but you are not a decision maker because you are not a member so the Zimbabwe Communist Party it is made up of few cadres who are schooled in Marxist Leninist philosophy bese usibala ama supporters that is support the political programs of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. So if first the program or a program of Alice Kulmanga, you go to Umelis Cock and Umelis Cock, sing a Zimbabweans, or was really Masses is Cock really, Kumelis Kipper is Zanu PFM Busway, Masses Kipper is Zanu PFM Busway, so Umelisaka Umno to a Oshelwa yit is a Zalanese Zimbabwe. Nasa Saka umno toit abandu seven seven za ye collapo SSL to Lela Pambili corner says Kuluma in your socialism. Please like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you are on TikTok, please do follow us. Amanda comrades.